All right. Happy Sunday. My name is Dr. Mo with Moya Body Care, Colon Hydrotherapy, and GPAT. And I'm your instructor for our foundation level colon therapy course. Today is September 8th, 2024. And our topic for today is going to be on the benefits of colon therapy. We're going to go over the contraindications. We're also going to go over in depth the five channels of elimination, which are the basis and foundation for your presentation to your audience. However, we are going to tap on a couple of additional um, digestive anatomy that you should know, okay? Um, the five channels of elimination, though, is going to give you a beautiful, well-rounded list of services, herbs, therapies, mod slash modalities, affirmations, menu plans. Um, let's see what else can move from that. I'm sure I, I'm missing something, but that is more than enough at the moment. And what do I mean by um, menu plans, um, the diets, all that good jazz, is that when you're working with the five channels of elimination, each client is going to need something different in that area. So as long as you know, in each channel of elimination, you know a modality or a service, you know an herb, you know exactly what that organ does. You're very aware of the emotions that are attached to that specific organ. Like for instance, um, the liver is always going to come up. The liver is always going to come up because the liver houses the emotions of anger, frustration, resentment, anxiety, confusion. Now, one way that you can get very clear about what energy organs are using, because remember, everything is energy, frequency, and vibration when we're working with wellness and illness. Um is that uh, the book, um, I see it on my desk. Louise Hayes, she has like eight different books, but there's one specific uh, Louise Hayes book that tells you the emotional connection to the illness that you are experiencing. For some reason, I cannot remember the name of that book. Something about your life, change your life, heal your life. It's escaping me. And I'm trying to look around to see if I even have it in here. Normally when I buy those books, I have one at the office and one here at the home. But I don't even see that book. I think it's at my desk. But it's Louise Hayes. Heal Your Life. That's the name of the book. Just give me a second. I got it. Heal Your Life. Now that book, I, in my 18 years of, of being of service to the community, I think I've gone through like eight of those books because I've wasted complete bottles of oil on top of it. I've given them away. They have walked away. Um, I've left them on airplanes because I was showing the pilot like, hey, you know, no, you, and then he takes it and then we're ushered out. I'm like, but my book, they're like, yeah, the pilot has a book now. It's gone. So some pilot on United Airlines has my book. <laughs> Pretty phenomenal. So, um, oh, I was going through the five channels. So yes, so you want to know um, at least one herb for each channel. And we're going to go over that. You need to know at least an affirmation for each channel. Because remember that everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. So everything in your client's physical world is held up by the spiritual, their beliefs, and what they hold to be true, as well as their definitions. My definition of success is very different from my landlord. It's very different. His success is all about physical money. 
my success is about having freedom to do whatever I want to do all day long. Two totally different things. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you can have both. You can have both. I mean, in order for you to do whatever you want to do, you have to have money to pay for your, your way. But that doesn't mean that I have to be a millionaire to do what I want to do all day long. You see where I'm going with it? I'm very content with, well, I'm not saying things couldn't get better, but <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm not hurting. Like, I'm okay. Everything's fine. Of course, I would love, you know, a European yacht tour of all the favorite shops and food locations that serve tiramisu. Of course. Who wouldn't? But in the meantime, I'm okay teaching. <laughs> so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. And let's start with the benefits. But before we get started with that, was there any questions in what I just shared? Anything at all? Or any ahas or... Um, yeah, any questions, any statements? Nope. I'll come. So the benefits of colon hydrotherapy. Let's talk about that. In order to talk about the benefits of colon therapy, you would need to know water. You would need to know the benefits of water. You would need to know how the body aligns and needs water to function as optimal best. One thing that I've noticed in regards to sharing information to new clients about colon therapy is that there is an educational piece that's needed to re-educate adults about the benefits and sacredness of drinking plain water. Because we have been told and sold that everything else outside of water is what you need. And if you do get water, it has to be filtered. You have to have this on it. It has to be in this tumbler with this chain attached to it to lock on your hip. So when your cell phone rings, it reads your pH level. Like we need all these things just to reach for water. All you need is water. That's it. That's literally it. Now. When you understand that water is perfect, water has all the elements that it needs to help your body operate at its most optimal, your body is literally over 95% water. When you take a cell and you put a cell from your body, like you take some blood, you put that blood on the smear, you put that under a microscope, about 90% of that cell is going to be water. 10% is going to be cell salts, magnesium, phosphorus, electricity, you know, things like that. But everything else that is moving around and in is pure water. When your tears come down, it's 90% water. You taste this little salty. That's how your cells taste the same thing you sit in a sack of water for nine months and you're nourished in water for nine months and you're just nourished and nourished and nourished we should be doing the exact same thing every other day in a bathtub your body already recognizes that you need to soak you soaked in fluids for eight months so we're designed to be in water we are designed to sit in the sauna. We are designed to sit in the steam room. We are designed to sit in the bathtub. We are designed to take in enemas. We are designed to take in colonics. Yes, we are designed to use floor waters on our body. Everybody should have some uh, rose water that you can spray on you and it should always be around you at any moment so you can spray it and keep on going and it keeps you grounded and rooted, fresh, 
And your body is always hydrating, hydrating, because remember your skin is a channel of elimination. So your skin absorbs and it also pushes out. And we're going to get to that in a moment. Any questions so far? And I'm still going in depth about water. No? Okay. So water is the perfect conduit for change. That should definitely be in your notes somewhere. And you can also share that with your clients. I share that with my clients often. That water provides the perfect conduit for change. Anything that is living and breathing and can multiply requires water. In order for you to clean properly, you need water. When you go to the dentist and they're cleaning your teeth, what are they constantly spraying behind that? Water. To clear, they need to see what's happening. We have at our disposal, when you get to that point, a course called Colo Lavage, which is a colonoscopy prep for colonoscopy sessions. And so basically what you're doing is just hydrating the client to the point where there are no more obstacles moving throughout the entire colon. And then from there, they go to your colon to their colonoscopy appointment. But in essence, all you're doing is hydrating the client and giving them the water where it needs to be. And then the body will absorb it and take it in. Now, when you look at, you back all the way up and we start looking at the history of colon therapy, there are so many different um, um, examples of colon therapy use in all cultures. I'm not going to go into all of them, but I will say that one that's very easy to find is the Book of Essenes. Now, the Book of Essenes, um, from my studies, have, it, I, it, some people say it's a collection of five books. Some people say it's a collection of four books. And then I've even read at some point that it's six books. So they're still not really sure because they were, you know, how those sacred texts were just thrown and they were placed in certain areas and hid. So they're still collecting these books and pulling them together. But these books were written before the Bible. That's how old this information is. And in the book of Essenes, there is a, and to this day, I don't know if it's a chapter or if it's an excerpt or if it's part of a chapter, I, I don't know because it's all broken up, but the section that I do have, it explains how to give yourself an enema by hollowing out a gourd, walking to the river where it's the warmest, filling the gourd up with water. You bend over on your knees over, you know, bend over, and then you insert the hollow gourd with the warm water into your neithers. That's what it says. Well, your neithers is your bum bum <laughs> back there. And then it says, continue to expel until the waters are clear. That's an enema. And that's in the book of Essenes before the Bible. I actually have that excerpt um, in a um, a frame in my treatment room. When I first started colon therapy, I keep everything. So any documents I get from trainings, I have, I know it's crazy, but I have all those documents from like way back when, from like 1996. And um, I was going through some papers and that paper fell out on the floor. So I picked it up. And it was that physical explanation of the book of Essenes. I don't remember being given that. There's no name on it. And normally when I'm given something, I write on the back training and the date and the teacher. There's nothing on the back like that. There's no hand. My handwriting is not on the back. There's no handwriting on, the, on it at all. It's just a physical copy. So I sat and I looked at that picture for like a month. Where did this come from? And then finally, I was like, you know what? If this is not a sign to move forward, I don't know what is. And that's just how I've always taken it is that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. 
because everything else, I know how I document things. That was one document that was not how I treat my stuff. So you know that you're on the right path because things will start happening to you like that, especially when you come to this information from a basis of foundation and not like ego, it should be this, but understanding why it is standing for so long like this. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So with the benefits of colon therapy, once you understand water, and I want you to all study, um, his name is Dr. Emoto. And if you pull his name up, if you just put in Dr. Emoto and water experiment, all of his information will pop up. Also, what will pop up is anybody else who has done research remotely close to his research will pop up in the Google. It will behoove you to study those people. It's going to give you a very different inside look into colon therapy from a water perspective and not a Western medical perspective. Because in essence, what you're working with is an element. Study the element you are working with. The element we're working with is water. Well, how does the body assimilate water? You can spray it on the body. You can put it in the mouth. You can put ice in the mouth and it'll dissolve. You can put moisture on the lips by adding oils. You have eye drops. You have ear drops. The body needs moisture. Now, this is where you start to sell colon therapy and the benefits of colon therapy. The more hydrated you are, the more healthy you are, meaning that the more diluted your bloodstream is. If your bloodstream is more acidic, you are going to grab and hold on to any little bugs and critters that need to be moving out of your five channels of elimination. Those channels just became closed and sticky and hot and the perfect breeding ground for viruses, bacteria, mold, insects. Yeah, all kind of good sticky, sticky stuff. You're going to have symptoms like headaches, sluggishness, um, irregular menstrual cycles. You may feel like you're moving through menopause at 20. It is impossible for you to be going through menopause at 20. You haven't experienced being a woman yet. And menopause, by the way, does not mean that the body is decaying or shrinking. It just means that a new level of self-care is needed because you are no longer in the childbearing years. Now you're in the wisdom years. That's a different level of care. But most women want to stay in that red dress and them high heels when they're well past that stage. Does that make sense? There's a time to wear heels. There's a time to wear flats and everything in between. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It just means that your foundation is grounded and you know how to operate it. That's all that means. So when we get into benefits of colon therapy and we understand what water is, we understand that water dilutes, water clarifies, it purifies, it increases circulation, water is alkalizing, it's neutralizing, Um, am I missing anything that you may have researched about water or anything that you want to share about water? Water is softening. It softens. Yep. Anything else we should add? I think it's like 
Blue Theory is just beautiful where they talk about what it does for like mental health just to be around water like salt air or the sound of water running and what that does for you. I've seen that. That's so you're stuff. talking about the senses. That's huge. Yep. For, me, for me, I I just waterfalls, any of it, the waves, that stuff is such a, a grounding thing. So you're talking about our senses and we're talking about sight. So we're talking about environment. Yes. 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 What else can we add to what we know about water? Water provides lubrication. Don't forget that as a colon therapist, water provides lubrication. Water also provides absorption. It allows you to absorb nutrients or whatever it is that you need to absorb. Medication too, you may need to absorb medication. Water provides nourishment. In order for you to get the um, benefits of an IV, an IV cannot be in powder form. It has to be in a liquid form. That liquid form, I guarantee you, is probably 85% water. That's what saline solution is. Yep. Perfect. So with that being said about the benefits of water or, or what water is, now when you roll that over into inserting that into the body by way of the colon, where is the colon sitting? The colon is sitting in between the uterus and the bladder or the prostate and the bladder for a man. So as you know, we only have one arterial system. We don't have different arterial systems for our reproductive, a se separate blood flow for our brain, a separate blood flow for our digestion. We have one blood flow that hits all 12 systems and you should know your 12 systems. The 12 systems are your reproductive, your digestion, your circulatory, so forth and so on. We have 12 systems, five channels of elimination. And so knowing that we have one blood supply system that circulates through all 12 systems, if you have any, let's say, constipation within the colon and you've been constipated for over 24 hours, what's going to start happening is auto intoxication because the body is super brilliant. It will start reusing waste if it's sitting there for long enough. That's why we are not designed to hold on to anything. That's why we have five channels of elimination. So if a person is constipated for a day, I guarantee you that waste from the colon, the energetic frequency, the residue, the whatever is moving through the bloodstream that the body has picked up from the colon is now circulating through the brain, has now circulated through the heart. Now it's circulated through the uterus. Ooh, now it's feeding the fibroid cystin tumor and that same blood supply that's feeding that fibroid cystin tumor could be feeding cancer, could be feeding BV, could be feeding um, bacteria in the mouth, infections. Ah. So the more hydrated you are, the less opportunity you have to hold on to things like that. The more alkaline your system is, the less opportunity your body will have to hold on to little critters and be stagnant. Hence the reason why it's so lovely to have a foundational, very gentle herbal care of, let's say, Massaging the body down morning and night with castor oil, pure castor oil. Washing the body with turmeric soap. As you know, turmeric is very alkalizing and purifying, 
right? Your skin is a channel of elimination. So we should always be looking at what we're putting on our skin. I personally like to mix black soap and turmeric soap together. I know I cut it up or shave it. And then I like do it like that in the bottle. And then I put it in a bottle and I make like liquid soap. I know. I know. It's crazy. I know. And then I spray. Girl, phenomenal. And then you can drop essential oils in it. That's a whole other class. But yes. So that's what I use on my body. I just kind of like break the soap down. I shave it. And then I put it in another bottle. I add spring water to it. And I shake it up and I make it into liquid soap. I think you get more bang for your buck if you do it that way because you you stretch your soap out. At least that's what I'm I'm noticing. I'm not buying as many of my turmeric bar soaps because I cut it and then I shave it and put it in the the water. Um, turmeric bar soaps. Say that again. Get your so your turmeric bar soap. Oh, at my famous warehouse that I go to, the the hole in the wall spot, the Halal Brothers, the Muslim Brothers. Yeah, 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 that spot. But you can make turmeric soap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Makita, you make your soap? Yeah. So you, I, I mean, and, and Makita, if you don't know already, is um, a doula. Am I correct? Yes. So she's a doula. So her using turmeric soap over the women's breast to keep the breast supple, to keep the breast um, gentle, to keep the the um, and I'm I'm shifting systems here to keep the uh, the lymph nodes is what I'm trying to say, like gentle and easy and open. There's no infection. Turmeric is very medicinal. So because the women are breastfeeding, they need to keep this very clean because their babies are latching onto it. But also think about stretch marks. Turmeric soap is so nourishing to the body. It is unreal. We haven't talked about magnesium oil on the body after you get out, but that goes into affecting the five channels of elimination as well. Okay. I feel like I got off for a second, but any questions on what I just mentioned? We get the time. Yes. So the benefits of colon therapy, let's go over that. What can it do for the body? What can it do? Well, the first thing that colon hydrotherapy can do, and it does, and this is coming from a non-traditional practice of energy, frequency, vibration, and nature. That's where this information is coming from. It's not coming from medical. It's coming from connecting with the physical source of the body and what the body is truly, truly is made of. What's going to essentially happen because the colonic unit is literally just a water faucet. It just turns water off and on. That's all it does. Any limits or pain or difficulty or irritability or uncomfortableness that the client feels on the table is up to them and because of them. It's not because of the colonic. The colonic just turns water on and off. That's all it does. It just flows water. Now, when a client starts to go through the motions, what the water is doing is highlighting what needs to come up to the surface. So the stuff is floating up to the top. That's the emotional, physical, and spiritual things that people don't want to pay attention to. They push to the side. They don't want to deal with, et cetera, et cetera. Now, remember that we are not practitioners that are here to tell people what to do. We work with adults over 21 who absolutely know exactly why they're here. I'll give you an example of that. I have a client on my table yesterday 
who's been a client of mine right before COVID hit. I met her right before COVID hit. Because I remember I worked with her on the phone through COVID because she was freaking out. I remember that very, very well. And um, she wanted to lose some weight, get her digestion in order, clear her skin up. She had about three fibroids that were growing, but we got them to stop. So they're no longer growing, but now we need to like back it up so that they start shrinking. It's 2024. Those fibroids should have been like this by now. If anything, they should be. And so she came in yesterday. She's looking all crazy. And I'm like, what's going on with you? And I work with this woman on a regular basis throughout the month since 2019. So I see her maybe every two weeks. This, I think that's her schedule every two weeks. Well, make a long story short, she just stopped taking a medication that she did not tell me about. I didn't. I wasn't even aware she was taking it. It was a medication for depression. Now, as you know, majority of medication for depression is a suppressed um, chemical. It suppresses. So I am going in as a colon therapist to wake up. Wake it up, wake it up, wake it up. While she's constantly taking something that's doing her like this. Hence the reason why we keep, we're missing each other. And I'm like, I know and I literally was racking my brain like something is off. And I kept thinking it was me. Like, what am I doing for this woman? Like, I do it for everybody else. And they respond within a normal, uh, excuse me, not normal, but in a, a timely fashion. I've been working with you since 2019. We should have so much more movement. Well, there's no movement because she was taking the suppressant. As soon as she stopped taking that depressant and she came in, which was yesterday, that was her first appointment with me after she had stopped taking that medication for three weeks. Her whole mood was different. It was like a different person. She was, she looked completely different. I didn't know who it was when I first opened the door. I was like, she did her hair different. Her clothing was different because she's no longer under this haze of, you know, walking like this. She was very agitated because there was no buffer. She hasn't had the full reality of life since before 2019. So now when you take that veil off and you're feeling air on your skin for the first time, it's going to hurt. It's going to sting. You're going to be like, what the hell is that? Love, that's called a wind. What are you talking about? So as she's moving through the world, of normalcy, the people around her are not aware of how to treat her. So she's been having issues in her relationship, her marriage. Her children are freaking out. Like, mommy, what is wrong with you? You should know better. Like, what are you doing? She's not getting to work on time. Traffic is overwhelming for her because she's been under this haze that makes her think that she's doing well. So when she gets on the table for the colonic, when I go to touch her, her anus, she's like, oh my God. So I look and I'm like, what? And I go, oh, her senses are turning back on. As a colon therapist, you should know this because that's what we do. We turn people back on after they've been like this for probably 10 plus years, most people are on a medication for 10 years. Most people. So when you start working with people in this capacity and you're talking to them about the benefits of colon therapy, I guarantee you the first couple of conversations are going to go like this over their head because they are dulled. They don't understand. They won't because they don't feel what we want them to feel, which is life. So how do you work with them? How do you show them the benefits? You slowly but surely ensure, embody, instill, confirm, demonstrate, no judgment, 
give them resources. You see where I'm going with it? Because it's going to be a very slow turn. What we do is not easily measured. It's 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 not measured. Like you you can't, it's not like a scientific, like, okay, these people took five pills within five days and then this happened. It doesn't work like that because we're working with energy, frequency, and vibration. And that's a will based off of what people define for them or not. Some people feel worthy. Some people don't. I'll give you an example of that. I have an infrared sauna in my office. I always sit a towel inside of the sauna so that the client can use it to wipe themselves. It's only a one seater sauna. I only work one-on-one -on -one with everybody. There's nobody else coming in and out. <clears throat> so when I go to get my client out the sauna, she's soaking wet. So I look at her and I said, you know, there is a towel there for you to use. Now, mind you, I would never sit a client in the sauna without letting them know this is your water. Here's your towel. There's tissue if you need to blow your nose. If you need to call me, press this button. You go through all the preliminaries, right? You know what she said to me? As sweat is dripping in her eyes. I didn't think that towel was for me. She's been in my office numerous times. She sat in the sauna numerous times. I only work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Who else would the towel be for? You're the one sitting in the sauna, not me. And she literally looked at me with just like a puzzled look on her face. She had no idea what I, she's like, wait, what? This towel is for me? But remember, people are medicated. So something as simple as her allowing herself to grab a towel, to care for herself, she's going to miss that because she's been reaching for something to take care of herself. And it's not a towel, it's a medication. You see where I'm going with it? Two different things. Questions, comments. Um, Ahas. I have a question. So, why is it that in the world we see so much negativity all the time and why there's never like a happy place where we're like, because right, we're here to help and clear people out of things, right? But then there's never a time when we, I feel that there's a person or somebody who comes in just because they want to keep maintenance. It's always because there's something wrong. And like, I was having a conversation with an elder the other day and there was a little child there and the little boy was like, oh, I think I want to live to be very old, like maybe a hundred. And then the elder said, oh, why would you want to do that? That's like, like very negative in the sense, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I was just like to the elder, well, you know, we probably shouldn't put that onto the child because that's not for you to tell the child. The yeah. child child should be able to make that discernment on its own right yeah. and yeah. not give that negative part to the to the child yep you know I I was wondering like you know why is that you know, and the elder is very negative on <clears throat> um is not happy with her life I'm talking about my mom I'm talking about my son my six-year-old son and we're just like you know and to me like she got mad because I told her like, Hey, that's not cool. And like, yeah. her, there's boundaries. Those are the boundaries that we have to set with our parents. Right. I respect my mom. I love her and everything, but those are the type of boundaries that I'm like, look, don't tell Kakai that like he wants to live to live a hundred. That's okay. Because life is beautiful. Why do we it have is. to the negative things for life? Right. So that's what I was wondering, like, and this has everything to do with, pulling therapy and cleansing and the whole thing right so uh -huh. I'm doing the work to teach my boys and my daughter that life is beautiful 
and uh-huh. things will happen, but we get back up and we continue to live and be happy with life because it's it's beautiful if you look around. It is, you yep. know. Yep. All the always negative part. Yeah. No, I'm I'm going to answer that. And speaking of elders, let me just check my mom and see what she needed because as you said that an elder walked out so give me (laughs) one moment (laughs) how y'all how are you all doing (laughs) good how are you doing doing well too doing good doing good I think I didn't speak to y'all sisters. How are y'all doing today? Hi, Patrice. How are you? I'm good. Good. That's our our sisters from another mother. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Yes, yes, yes. I know your mom is like, wait a minute. I have how many more girls? Wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) And tell her we're all coming over for dinner too. So she got to cook for all of us. Right. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Right. Hello. (laughs) We're all coming over. So, I got a question, Dr. Mo. Um, yeah. And then I'll circle back to answering um, Jess. Jess. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question is, and I, I was listening to you about the medicine and, um, you know, I, I, I think a little different. So that's why I'm asking the question. So in that case, because um, when patients do come off of their um, antidepressants or whatever they're taking. Um, what we see, and I'm, I'm going to speak on the medical side to get to the question that I need you to answer for me. What we do see is a lot of those times that everybody that takes it is not so suppressed. I did, so that kind of caught me because I didn't want everybody to think that everybody that takes it gets suppressed because a lot of time they're suppressed with whether they take something or not. Um, mm-hmm. And cause I, I, I ended up on an antidepressant when I had my son in 2005. So mm-hmm. in my case, my kids will tell you, Hey mom, we need you to take your medicine. We can't handle you without your medicine. So, mm-hmm. and that's because I end up with a hysterectomy. I have no hormones, so nothing to help me balance. So mm-hmm. it's, um, yeah. So I guess my question is, when they come to you or we as colonics um, doing their therapy, do you ask them questions? So do their doctors know that they stopped it or do you not? Oh, of course. Okay. Of course. Of okay. course. Definitely. So yeah. as you've been a client of mine, um. No worries, Makita. As you know, there's always a very in-depth consultation. There should be before you touch anyone. I always do a very in-depth consultation that includes an oral consultation at the same time where I'm going over your intake form, at the same time as I give you the Zyto scan, at the same time that I'm doing your biometric scan as well. So I'm in dialogue with my client for at least 45 minutes, sometimes to an hour before we even start the colonic. But that's how I run my practice. Most people only sit with their pra- with their um, clients for less than 10 minutes going over what's happening with them and their why. So you got to look at that too. You got to look at as a practitioner, how deep do you want to go with the client? And then here's the other thing too. You can go as deep as you want to go with the client, the first appointment, and they can tell you nothing. And then five years later, they can say, oh, by the way, I've always been on all of this meds. You see where I'm going? And I've had that happen. Yeah, I've had that happen. So again, it's not about giving a blanketed statement about being suppressed. Everyone who lives in the U.S. of A, who was not at billionaire status or millionaire status, we are suppressed in some kind of way. We are. So 
I don't want you to think that the statement was just particularly for people who take depressants and there's nothing wrong with it. Again, we teach no judgment. No, I, I, didn't, take also, like I'm sorry, oh, yeah. I didn't take it like that. I was just trying I to see how do, you, how do you direct. How you pull it out? Yeah. Out of the, mm -hmm. the client. Do you do that every session before, you know, because stuff do changes. So do you. Or you That's just use their body question. language and you reach them every time that they're coming in. That is an excellent question. So in general, when I have return clients come to me, depending on if it's been a month later, two months later, three months and above. If it's under three months, I just do a verbal check-in. Hey, it's been about three weeks since I've seen you last. Update me on your emotional, physical, spiritual well-being. And then because I have a history with this person, I know what to tap into because I take really good notes. That's another part of your training. Now, if it was over six months since the last time I saw that person with no contact at all, then they will be doing a new intake form. I will be doing a scan and I will be doing a body composition. People don't tell you a whole lot they don't have to, but as a colon therapist, you have systems set in place so that you can check for yourself. And you don't have to worry about the client verbally telling you because you just did a scan. And you did two different scans and you've been trained to the point where you can look at the physical body. You can look at their pulse, their tongue, the texture of their skin, the color of their skin. How they're breathing. Are they sitting up? Are they dragging their feet? Are they leaning forward? Like all of these signs will tell you what is kind of happening with the client. And then you can start piecing together the questions that will probe the right answer. Because you as a practitioner have been trained to see symptoms and start asking the right questions versus sitting back and waiting for a client to tell you because they will not. They will not. If anything, they'll probably steer you the other way into confusion. Like, yeah, you know, so. Mm -hmm. You're like, very welcome. You see the whole body, right? The whole thing, the whole system. You'll start understanding body language and the whole thing. Exactly. Kind of like, kind of like us with Nord, you know, he's um, nonverbal. And to me, I'm very in tune to his body. And when he, like, I know when he's constipated or when he yep. doesn't feel well because he can't communicate. Yep. So I've learned so much to just see his body. And I'm his mom, so I know too. But to exactly. know. Okay, that makes sense. But that skill set is going to teach you how to be still enough to pick up your client's vibrations. So if you want, we can all do this homework assignment. You're going to touch a minimum five people. Those people can be your family. And what you're going to do, you're going to take your hands and you're going to clear them with, you can wash your hands under warm water and then follow that up with cold water to close your portal. These are portals. Remember, these are portals. To close it down, um, cover it or have cold water run over. Say that five times your hands, or you can sage your hands. You can hold your hands over like an incense that's burning, or you can go outside to the sun and put your hands up or put your hands in dirt. If you have a lovely backyard to get grounded and ask mother earth to guide you, or you can just simply hold your hand in prayer, whichever is good for you. You're going to touch a minimum five people. And what you're going to do, you're going to place your left hand. Um, let me think. Yes, you're going to place their, your left hand over there, right under their throat, right at their chest area. You're going to place your right hand right on top of their navel. So you're going to be like this on them. Right? You're going to soften your shoulders. Soften your wrists, soften your hands. So your hands are going to be like, Ugh. 
They're just going to be soft. All you're going to do is listen to their body, not yours. You're not searching for anything. You're not trying to give them anything. You're only listening. This is an exercise in stealing your stuff so that you can be of service to other people. You have to practice that some kind of way. Yep. You have to practice stealing the body, stealing the mind, stealing all the stuff that's moving through you. You know how you can feel like, ooh, like I feel a little energy moving through my body. Um, you're going to quiet that. And so this is going to be an exercise in strengthening your self-mastery. This is going to be an exercise in strengthening your listening skills. Your subconscious is going to come to the front and your conscious is going to go to the back. So most likely you're going to close your eyes when you do this. Naturally, you're just going to, going to close your eyes. And we're women, so we're very intuitive anyway. So we should be moving with our eyes closed versus with our eyes open. That's a whole nother class. We'll do that later. <laughs> and you want to touch a minimum five people between now and next week. And I just want you to keep track of what you picked up. Ask the person that you are touching, did you feel anything for me? Or like, did you feel peace? Did you feel comfortable? Like, what did you get from my auric space? Like for me holding space for you, what did you pick up? And just ask people. In your stillness, what do they feel from you? Because remember that you are not doing anything outside of holding space. That's it. You are not healing people. You are not the colonic. None of that is happening. So this is a practice of getting out of the way. This is a practice of getting out of the ego. Yes. You can do this with animals too, if you want. Um, give me one second. I'm sorry. I have a student. Do the people have to be laying down? That would be nice and lovely if they were in a very rested, peaceful position because your clients will be. They're going to be on your table. So you want to envision like you already standing in the space of being a colon therapist. You have a client on your table and you're just listening to what their body is telling you. Oftentimes when clients get on my table, they immediately, well, actually when they walk in the door, they immediately just start dumping, which is fine. So I'm listening, but I'm also looking at how they're walking. I'm looking at what they're talking about. I'm looking at how animated they are, how suppressed they are. I'm looking at if they have on the same shoes. Sometimes my clients don't have on the same shoes <laughs> or <laughs> their shirts are like Miss Button. So that tells me a lot like, um, Queen, did you just come from work like that? Okay, let's let's help you. Let's let's get you a glass of water first. <laughs> and let's give you a moment to breathe. So sometimes you're going to be taking things off of clients before they start because here is the other thing and we're getting into the uh, five channels is that we operate in parasympathetic nervous mode. So you should know everything about the parasympathetic mode, emotionally, physically, spiritually. What are the physical things that you can do to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system? And give me one second. I'll be right back.
So you should know physical tools that you can use to tap into someone's parasympathetic nervous system. One thing that I use in my office, or two things that I use in my office is number one, the trampoline. We went over great detail about the benefits of the trampoline and what, what it does to our lymphatic system and how important it is for our five channels of elimination. I also have a vibration unit in my office where clients stand on it and it vibrates them. That's going to tap into their parasympathetic nervous system, shock them back into, oh, I need to relax and be easy and gentle. You can also get the chi machine where you lay the client on the floor. And I have that at home, actually, where I lay down the floor and I put my ankles in it and it moves the body like this. It's a chi machine. If you research chi machine and goldfish movement, Yes, research chi, mach chi machine and goldfish movement. It's going to give you this whole situation on how to care for yourself by moving like a goldfish. That taps into your parasympathetic nervous system because it's affecting your spine. Another thing that I do for my clients, very very lovely on the slide. They never realize exactly what I'm doing. They think I'm giving them a massage, but I am. But that's what massage does. Massage taps into the parasympathetic nervous system, which by the way is rest and digest. Sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight. Now, if you want to build your business just off of those two systems, you can just stay focused on that, on parasympathetic and sympathetic. Rest and digest, fight or flight. And that could be your whole like Instagram marketing focus, literally. Or your marketing like mine is spirit and five channels of elimination and education. So it just depends. You can focus on colon health and womb health. I literally just did a four-week um, clinical applications of Yoni Steaming on Friday. It's a really good class. Yeah, it was good. I, I had fun. It was a good, we did a lot, a lot of good stuff. So, I mean, you can just focus on women's health if you want to. You can focus on men's health if you want to. So, um. I was going somewhere with that. Where was I going with that? I forget where I was going with that. Any questions? But I'm going to get back to Jess' um, answer to her question in regards to why it's so negative. Or maybe I should just go ahead and answer it now. So I want to preface the answer with before I introduced you to your really learning how to implement your uh, natal chart, your solar return chart, your galactic signature, and your human design, what were your thoughts about yourself before I introduced you to that? And then what are your thoughts about yourself now that you have a different perspective? You got it right in the point. Very, very negative and low about myself. Um, I was programmed to believe that I was stupid for a very long time for my siblings as a little child. So I believed that for a long time and my ex-partner, he was the same way. So I believed that for a long time because I was with my ex for like 10 years and that was like implemented in my brain so vividly with my siblings and my ex. So I had that for a long time and I've been moving through it. But then going into your class, everything just went like, nope, that is wrong. That is not like that. I took that away from my system and my body and my brain and mm -hmm. studying myself, I am mm -hmm. way more confident now I love myself I'm happy you know with yes I have some things coming up at, in life with the teenagers and the home and all that all right. and I keep it 
I keep everything together, but it doesn't bother me to the extent that it used to anymore. Now nope. it's just so different. Like I don't get upset. Like I love it. Yep. And then here's the other thing about that. When you start studying yourself in that manner and you see the words that are displayed to describe you and who you are, you take ownership and pride in that. And it changes your perception and perspective on what's happening to you. And then you get introduced to sacred texts like Science of Mind, A Course in Miracles, and you realize that nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal can exist. Herein lies the peace of God. And you start moving from that information. Things are no longer humdrum. Now they're like, wait a minute. Did you know you have this information at your disposal? So your whole angle at how you do things are just very different. When people don't know who they are or have mastered themselves, people are going to tell you what they think you should reach for. It will always be beneath them. And if you allow that, then that's what you will reach for. And you'll never be satisfied because that's not your truth. That's why people are so negative is because they have not taken the time to master themselves. They've taken the time to be told what to do. They don't even know that they have an option to learn themselves. It's not even given to them. So they're doing things that they don't want to do. They're taking classes that they don't want to take. And they're just miserable. Well, I have to stay with him because I don't have anything else. Or I have to deal with her. But actually, no, you don't. You have a lot of options. But if you're not studying that, you're going to think the world is shit. And it's not. It really is not. Here's the other thing that happens. When you start studying yourself, you see opportunity and not problems. Very true. And that's exactly how I've been like being with myself and everybody. And they've noticed and they're just like, you know, because certain little things happen and I don't react the way I used to. I'm, just, mm -hmm. I'm starting to study the little guy because he's very in tune with everything. He's actually a man manifester in his human design and those are like I think 97 percent of the population and that's the other thing that I was going to pull up and you just pulled it up which is an alignment is that when you start studying human design you know that the majority of the population moves from emotion they do not move from truth so when you know that then you understand that life is not happening to you it's happening for you because nothing is personal because everybody's moving from emotion. Oh, yeah. you made me feel this way. Like I literally had somebody send me an email. This person went to great lengths to tell me how I pushed their buttons when they didn't ask for it. And they went to so much length to make sure that I don't find out who it is because they sent it from a bogus email. You can't track it. And then what they, they said, it was very vague, but they made sure to let me know that I felt some kind of way when you told me A, B, and C about water. That's all emotion-based. She didn't say what I said wasn't true. She didn't say what I said wasn't factual. You see where I'm going with it? She said it made me feel like an idiot. I didn't make you feel like nothing. You feel like that. I gave That's you the truth. Exactly. Now, your definition of how that ebbs and flow through your body is up to you. Because I serve everybody the same information. Every time you see a video or you talk to me or I'm working with a client, my conversation is the same. Because you know, 33 plus people in the population are not focused. They don't listen. They have no idea what I just said. So there's no reason for me to have 20,000 things going on at one time when people can't focus on one. That's why I say 
Study the five towns of elimination. Trust me, that's as much as people can handle. They can't handle the 12. Five is enough. Two is overkill. Five is more than enough. I've been working with my client that I mentioned to you earlier for since 2019. I mentioned the five channels of elimination to her every time she comes in. And I mentioned it on, on yesterday. And she looked at me like it was the first time she's ever heard it. Now she's been to my book signing. It's all up and through my books. I've signed it for her. We've wrote, I've written in that book on that page, the five on that page. And she still said to me, what? And I looked at her and I said, you have my book. What do you mean? What? You know what she said? Oh, I didn't read it. I'm just supporting you. And in that moment, I went back to the truth. 33 plus percent of the population, they're not even present. They're just moving off of emotions, whatever makes them feel good. Whatever makes them feel good, that's where they're flowing. It has nothing to do with facts. Hence the reason why the medical field is so amazing. It feeds emotions. And that's what I realized too, because I, I'm starting to throw out facts to everybody like about their like behaviors and emotions and mm -hmm. stuff. They don't like that. They do not like that at all. They, they like get that. very offended. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm just stating the obvious. <laughs> like, you know? So here is what we learn as a colon therapist is to give the truth and the obvious in a very sacred, mundane way. That's what we do as colon therapists. We are not here to make people feel less than. We are not here to make them think that we are up and they are low. No. We are here to let them know that if you need any information, we can be a guide on this path. We can be a lighthouse. I can share some resources that may help you in the long run, but that does not separate me from me thinking that I'm better than you or you're better than me and vice versa because I have a title and that, 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 that. No, we don't operate like that. So when we're working with our clients and we're helping them understand what they have, how they have contributed to, let's go back to the original statement being negative. I always bring it back up and round it back up with, but here's the beautiful thing about this whole process. Hello, love bug. Hi. I'm working. You're not working, but go. Yeah, pick up your phone. <laughs> okay. Say bye, bud. Say bye. Bye. Bye, love bug. Oh, he just wants some loving. I love it. <laughs> I don't mind going to Target for him later. I really don't. <laughs> like, he would like, you know what I've noticed about him? He's a very good shopping partner. Hello, why did you think I said I don't mind going to Target? Yeah. I know my friends when I see them. Yeah, he, my, our old, our, my daughter, she was just like, mom, his girlfriends or wife are going to love him because he's going to be one. Yeah. And like yeah. help him get dressed and the whole thing. <laughs> and it, it doesn't help that he has those dreamy eyes everybody wants to look into and he knows how to work them already at his age. So don't worry about that. Yeah. You're going to need a shotgun later. So just get ready. Yeah. Um, so when we are working with our clients and we're talking about negativity, that will always be part of your sessions with your clients. It will always be, uh, or let me, let me back all the way up. No, 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 no. That's not what I want to say. One thing, you know, I had an orange in here the other day. I swear to God, it like spawns. It's like two gnats in here. And it's just sitting right here where I had the oranges. It's ridiculous. And the orange peel's not even in here anymore. So what? Why are you in here? I can linger around. 
Yeah, it's like you have all outside to be outside with, and you want to be in here? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Okay. I don't know. But um, what did I want to say? Oh, about the emotional stuff. So one thing that I look at when I'm working with my clients is the language that they use to express themselves. When you pay, oh, second part of your homework, listen to people's vocabulary. Don't say nothing. Just listen. Speak less. Listen 99% of the time. Don't say nothing. Don't even say, oh, I do that too, because sometimes we we want to create a safe space for people's conversation. So we try to find something that we have in common versus just listening. We do that often. Take that hat off and just be a rock and just, you don't have to absorb, just be a rock, just listen. You're not solving anybody's problems because oftentimes people listen to solve a problem or to say that, oh, we're connected because we know the same people or the things, situation, places. Remove all of that. Just listen. You will be amazed at how negative people are, how quick people take themselves out the game. They didn't even start. They didn't even consider it. There's no consideration that they could succeed. They just taken themselves. Oh, no, I'm not. And then you start looking at people like, wait a minute, I'm hanging with you? Because you know energy, frequency, and vibration matches. It's going to be very beautiful to see what comes up for next Sunday. Questions? Any ahas? You know, Dr. Mo, you had mentioned about the gift you gave of our uh, galactic signature, and it was just that. I have to say that I, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a very empathetic person. I always have been, even as a child, and it. Uh, I feel like that was used against me in a lot of ways. And when I learned that that is a gift that I wield, that I, it's a power I have. It's not, it is. That makes me weak or, and I'm a server. And I have to say, I was pissed that I was a server. I wanted to be like some baddie. Like I want, I wanted to be like, that like, is a baddie. It is a baddie. And I right. thought that like with my blue and like everything that I have, that kind of gives me my powers. I have this thing that's like, childlike wonder all the time and I've been told I was silly or didn't take things seriously and it, it's quite the difference I take things to heart big time and mm -hmm. I think the gift you gave me is that I know my power and I set boundaries I never set my parents took advantage of it I mean we have, yeah. we, have we everybody has stories right we all have our yeah. stories but I feel like now like the negative people, our father will try to contact us or something. And I'm like, no, that is my choice. And that has ah. changed my life. Like that has not just helped me with like, Hey, this is something I'm excited to learn and do. That's a gift you gave me with my life. So I oh. want you to know that, that I appreciate that. And it's not ah. a light thing to take, you know, for granted. Mm -hmm. I think it's really special. Absolutely. So, Oh, we're coming over for dinner, baby, tonight. Yes. Tell mama to get the That's steaks so ready, great. baby. I yeah. So I did want to mention that in class today. So thank you. This and is awesome. Yeah. Jess, I wanted to caveat off something you said about the negativity. And I feel like, I feel like this so often. I think that everywhere you look in our world today, even our quote unquote positives are delivered in such a negative way. If you look at any kind of, um, mainstream movies or music or media or whatever there's there's always this really dark ribbon of whether it's violence or depression or drug use or whatever like you really mm -hmm. just don't get away from that 
And I think so much of it, it's so important of like, um, point of view, what you choose to pick up on. I tell my son this all the time, what you choose to look at, like, if you see the negativity, all you're going to see is that negativity. Mm -hmm. If you see the positives or, you know, the growth, those, those are the things that are going to stand out to you and be the light you want to see in the world. I tell my boys that all the time. If you want positivity around you, be positive and that it. vibration and frequency, it's going to draw that. And mm -hmm. it's funny through this class and learning that and learning more about myself, I've been able to take the things that I was trying to teach my son and that kind of stuff and apply it to myself. And it, it makes such a difference, yeah, but it yeah. also can make you like more indignantly angry. I think when you see it so blatantly, like with yeah. that elder speaking that negativity over, yep. you want to protect it. You so be like, don't don't yeah. speak that don't over that dare. person. Yeah. Don't say that over that human. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't, be, you don't he's a little boy. He's a child. Exactly. She's so Yes. But you know, you know what I, what, what, what I do for me, because that happens often, especially when you have little children and people feel that they know more than you because they have already raised children. Now I raised my son a very specific way. My son was homeschooled all throughout school and now he's at El Camino college, right? Very different experience. So oftentimes people felt like they can just look over me, go directly to my son and say something to him in regards to life or money or school or friendships. So I would allow that person because they just, you know, they did what they did. And so I would gently pull my son's face to me and I'll go, as I have already taught you people will always try to impart their negativity on you, just like how that was displayed right now. And he'll go, I know, mommy. And that person will go, oh. it's not for me to check a grown person. It is for me to bring my son's attention right back to me. So I say to my son, so remember the other day when I was talking to you about how forceful people can be with stepping over your mother and then coming directly to you as a child, that's a moral obligation that you cannot cross. You should not. That was just demonstrated right now. Did you just see that, what that person just did? And then that person is standing there like, what, what? and I, I'll stop them and I'll go, this lesson is not for you. You're a grown yeah. adult. Talk to your parents about that. And then I go back to my son. That. That's how you change the narrative. And then so I I did that with my mom, but of course she got offended and got, she got mad because- I'm going to stop you for a second. Going back to human design, 33 plus people move from emotion. Don't forget that. <laughs> Don't forget that. Like that, that's the whole goal is to move from emotion and not fact. Emotion is like smoke. It just, it comes and it dissipates. It doesn't mean anything. It's fleeting. It comes. That's why love, you can't stand on love. Not the love that everybody is selling. No, that doesn't sell. That Well, it sells. It definitely sells. But when that chemical comes back down and you're back to the mundane, that's why COVID was so effective because it had people look at their mundane life not the life that you can just gloss over because you don't have time to look at it. So you can just throw whatever you want, throw at it. It's just magical. Da, 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 da. I'll just throw, I'll just do that. But now that people are at home and they can sit and they're in the energy, they can't really go anywhere. Now they're like, oh, this is not really what I thought it was. It's the mundane everyday life that you have to fall in love with and make sacred and magical. That's what we do as colon therapists. We re-teach people how to love themselves right where they are. Going back to basically what you said about everything around us is negative. Everything that we consume 
is telling you that you're not good enough, you need more, you're not a boss, you need to be a champion. If you're not marketing like that, you're not going to get that bag. You know, the fall is coming up, so you need to be getting your Halloween. It's like It's always, I got, I got, I got, I got to get, I got to get, I got to get. And then on the flip side of that, you have people showing you that your life is not shit because I'm in Jamaica in a circle swing with the flowers that everybody else is on as well. That doesn't mean anything. You telling me that you moved off the grid to have a better life does not help me have a better life. It just shows me that you're showing me that you moved. That's it. But we look at all of these pages on social media and then we get depressed because we feel we're not doing anything because everybody has their ring light on showing them a snippet of their makeup that they put on this morning for a second. But when you turn that light off and you look at the rest of their house, it's in shambles. But this one section right here is perfect. But you just move the camera just a little bit here, a little bit there. You're gonna be like, ah! The same with life. Trust me. I have these same people on my table. They are not well. They are not happy. They are not content. Now, here's the thing. My equipment may not be top-notch equipment, but I take care of it and it works. It leaks a little bit here and there. I mean, you're going to leak when you hit a certain age too. <laughs> Hopefully you do. I plan on investing in a new one. But here's the thing. I'm booked and busy. There are other people who have offices that are tricked out. When I tell you, I'm like, that is so nice. My office is not like that. I'm not saying that it can't be. I'm just simply saying I am focusing on what's important. That's having a clean space to hold people in light with a high energetic frequency. I am approaching my business from a space of high capacity. My stuff is not in the forefront. I keep my stuff very, very low. I try to keep myself very satisfied so that I'm not pulling from my clients or I'm not dropping my shit on them during their session. So part of your homework, the reason why you are having this homework is because when you start talking to clients on the table, it's not about you, it's about them. I cannot tell you how many people have told me that their therapist uses their appointment times for their therapy session. The client, I mean, the colon therapist therapy session. Your client shouldn't know anything about your personal stuff unless you post like you went on a trip or something. But that's probably the extent. This time it's for them, not for you. Go give yourself a colonic before you start touching people. Give yourself a facial before you start touching people. Make sure that you feel good in the underwear that you have on before you start touching people. Tend to yourself before you start tending to other people. If you are not feeling good and you're hungry or you got to pee, you are nowhere near present to hold this client in light. And they're going to know it because you're going to be rushing. You're going to be irritable. You're going to be short. You're going to be negative. You can only give what you are and what you practice. You only give what you are and what you practice. Let's sit on that for a second. And you let me know how you feel about that statement. <clears throat> and if it's been true for you or not. Yeah. I know. Thank you, Makita. <laughs> Makita's like, Mo, you hear me, girl. I'm going to send you art. Yeah, 
us. You know, I feel that it's really challenging when it's like, like your parent because, you know, I've grown up to respect my elders and to not disrespect them. I respect my mom fully. I love her. Um, I care about her. I'm the youngest and I'm actually the one taking care of her. Sometimes we have I so many things in alignment. Everything that you just said is like a yes for me as well. Yes. We're walking the same path. And it's not difficult, if I may. What is happening is that you are having to level up yourself. You are no longer in a space of exactly the elders are figuring it out too. So you're no longer in the space of needing your mother to guide you as her daughter. That chapter has ended a long time ago, if I may respectfully say that. And um, you are now in the position of equal, if not just a little bit more to guide your mom and expand her, but not change her. There's nothing that we need to change about anybody. The only thing that we need to do is accept our definitions on why we are moving the way we're moving with certain people. That's it. My mom is with me right now uh, because her home is getting serviced and fixed. She's only supposed to be in my house well, with me for like two months. We're moving into one year. It's totally fine. It's not a problem. My mom um, needed her toenails cut. And um, when she told me that day, when I tell you I had no time for anything else, I couldn't do anything. My day was so busy with Franklin, my son, and work. I had cancer patients. It was, I, when I got home, I was dead. And I actually forgot. So the next day, she went to her house and my sister was staying there. And she told my sister how upset she was that I didn't cut her nails. Don't worry about the fact that I've been working all day from 7.45, no, actually 8.45 a.m. I think I got home at 9.10 that night. So I've been gone all day. I don't even think I ate dinner. But she goes and tells my sister that I just didn't do it. So instead of getting upset, now remember my mom is an elder. She's 76. She's totally fine. She, yeah, she does what she wants to do. She still drives. They went up to the casino like last weekend. They did their thing or whatever. And she goes to church and she's back and forth to Mississippi on the plane. Sometimes we drive. So she's good. She's not bedridden or anything. Um, She's actually a little too good in my eyes. <laughs> she moves too much. She needs to slow down. She had a little cut shirt. I said, I'm oh, just oh, zipping to do. What'd you get? She was like, they need to breathe. I'm like, what? <laughs> so she's good. Ain't nothing wrong with her. And so instead of, you know, taking it personal, remember that everybody, the majority of people you meet, over 50% of the population moves from emotions first before they move from fact. Over 50%. And I need to find the exact percentage. It's a whole lot more than 30. I think 33% is something else. Moving from your emotional space is over 50% of the population. So when I when my sister called me and told me that, at first I kind of responded from emotion. Oh! And then I stopped myself. And I was like, okay. So when I came home that next night, I said, hey, mama. I said, how about I steam your feet? Clip your toenails, get the dead skin off, and then top it off with like a warm castor oil foot massage. Yeah, just to say thank you for being awesome. Her whole body lit up. She's like, oh, well, let me get, and I said, you don't have to do anything. I got everything ready. Just come in here and sit down. And she was like, oh, her whole body shifted to grateful, to I'm seen, 
to I'm loved, to I'm getting ready to get my feet worked on. And then later on that day, I hear her calling her little church friends, talking about what her daughter did for her feet. That's what we do as colon therapists. So in order to hold space for people, you have to be able to move your shit to the side and be of great service. Regardless of what you think needs to be serviced and how that person needs to be served and told within a reason, right? As long as it's not putting you in harm's way and you're not going against your morals, you know? Now I'm talking in regards to my parents and then, you know, respectfully with clients. You don't want to be a doormat. That's not what I'm saying. But I'll give you another example. I had one of my mentors, I didn't go into detail about this too much on social media because she follows me, <clears throat> but my mentor from when I was five, um, when I first became, so she met me at five years old. I was in dance class with her. I went all, and she's been knowing me ever since. I'm 46 now. And we've, she's known my whole entire family. She's known me before I have children. So she's a mentor of mine. She knows me very deeply. She gave me my first tap class. She was the first one that saw me as a teacher, that saw my gifts. She was the one that did that, right? So my first class was like 28 yeah. little girls with tap shoes on. I think it was like 25 or 28 in one room. Can you imagine? And I'm in the 11th grade. How am I? And and they're just moving. And these shoes are just a tapping, and they're just a tap, tap, tapping. And I'm like, I. But we did it, and we had fun. So speed it up to my first year working as a colon therapist. She is a client of mine. Now at that time when she came in, I'm a new client. I don't have my own office. I'm renting space from somebody who also I will not mention her name because she's very well known in the community in our industry. And so she comes in, I give her a colonic, everything is lovely, it's fine. So two weeks later, I'm at the front desk and she comes in. So I'm like, oh, I didn't know I had an appointment with you. And she says, I don't have an appointment with you. I have an appointment with the professional. So hold on one second. So um, my heart, as you can imagine, fell all the way down. And she walked past me and went to the therapist that I was renting space from. And they laughed and they talked and they went on. And I stood there. So many things was going through my head. And I was like, what was that? I, and, I, and I didn't have any of the tools that I have now to help me manage that. But that always stayed with me. It always stayed. I tell you little things like that in your business will stay with you until you work on it and you heal, right? So throughout the rest of my career, you know, I'm, I'm excelling, I'm expanding. So I'm doing events around LA and I bump into her. She still doesn't acknowledge me. She doesn't still doesn't see me and I'm thriving. And she's like, oh yeah, I'm still going to the professional, whatever, whatever. Okay. You know, it was still hard to accept. This is a person that has been in my life since I was five. But keep this in the forefront. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal can exist. Herein lies the peace of God. Remember that statement. So I'm, I'm going to come back to it. And so speed it up to now. I'm not going to go into all the little things that happened since the first time she's been on my table. That was over 18 years ago because it's, I've been in business 18 years. She came to me in my first year. That was the only time she's been on my table once, right? So she knows a lot of people that have been on my table. Her son has been on my table. Her sister has been, so people around her have been telling her like, Mo is like, you know, you may need to go to her. So she's reaching out. And I do have to say that I consciously said no. 
I was not ready to be of service to her again. Because I knew that in that moment, I would be very mean to her. I didn't want to do that. I, I'm, I was still juvenile in, in learning my how to do, work with that. So I just kept saying, uh, uh, no, no, no. And I, sometimes I did it in a not so pleasant way. And I own that. But I'm working with my emotional stuff. Speed it up to today. Last month. She puts an appointment in a very dramatic way. Very, very dramatic, like a need. She needed something needed to be done. And I was like, this is odd. She comes in, make a long story short. She has been married to her husband well before I was even born, right? Her husband now have, has Alzheimer's, a real bad case of diabetes, um, heart uh, disease, and some other things. She's his primary caretaker. She just found out a boatload of shit about this man. Number one, he has a son that he's been passing off as a cousin, but technically that's his son. So he has a son outside of their three children. She just realized that. The woman he had a son with is um, his cousin's wife. The cousin did not know. The cousin just recently died. And then the wife just recently died after. And that's how everything came out. Now, mind you, her husband is, um, he has, he's, has Alzheimer's. So he's not, he's not there. So when she's telling me this so that I can help her in the back of my mind, I start putting the timeline together. She also says that the constant urinary tract infections were not urinary tract infections. They were STDs. So she's telling me all of this and it's hitting her hard. Her whole life has been a lie this whole time. So everything that she was positioning to us was actually the complete opposite. So this woman in her mature age is sitting across from my desk do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know how difficult it was, but yet very easy to push my shit to the side? Now I understand why you did what you did because you realized that your husband was doing A, B, and C when you came in for that second colonic and you needed a woman to help you because I was still young. I've never been married. The woman I was working under has been married for years. It wasn't about me. It was about her need. Do you see where I'm going with this? You cannot take anything personal. You cannot. When this woman sat in front of me, my mentor of years, and all the story and heat I had built up behind this exchange I had 18 years ago was all a lie. I sat there looking at her and I internally, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried. So I looked at all the missed opportunities that we have could have connected with, but because we were both going through our shit, we didn't. I'm grateful that she still sees me as someone she can confide in because what she shared with me I'm sure she's never told anybody. No ego, zero ego. That colonic that I gave that woman in her truth as my mentor was the best colonic I have given ever in my life. I'm pretty positive we were sitting on Jupiter when I was giving that colonic. I am pretty positive God, Buddha, Jesus, uh, uh, who else was up there with us? Yeah, all, all of those sacred sages. They were all sitting in there smoking a joint, probably saying, yeah, Mo, go for it, go for it, go for it. Like it was so powerful because there were no limits on my heart. Let me just pour into this woman who needs it.
She needs nourishment through colon therapy. That's what we do as practitioners. Questions, comments, concerns. That was that was deep. Mm -hmm. now, you know, I understand where you're coming from with that and how it all makes sense. And it's what you said earlier about me. I don't, I don't, before I was that little girl who always wanted that approval from a mom and now I, I don't want it and it doesn't matter to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think she's struggled. I think my mom's the one struggling right now because I don't come to her fine anymore. Exactly. They we're all them. moving through something. Mm -hmm. We're either moving into it, coming out of it, or processing it. Thanks for sharing that, Dr. That, that was deep. amazing. That was really heavy. Yeah. And really, um, like, like, I don't know, it kind of put into perspective like two or three different relationships. We were like, 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 do we like do oh that? my gosh. Yeah. Like, of just people that we care about or hold in high esteem that sometimes it feels like a really great connection and then sometimes it feels like a miss and we often both of us it. will yeah. internalize and take mm -hmm. that personal thing and, and mm -hmm. like man there you know there. just to take yourself out of that equation yeah yeah, yeah. In order to not take anything personal you have to have a certain level of understanding about truth I have a student in my seership program since January. She doesn't have any boundaries. She doesn't know what healthy boundaries look like. She has been abandoned numerous times. She has been mistreated numerous times. And she's a nurse. She has children. Um, her boundaries, though, are not healthy. She's still trying to understand what healthy boundaries look like. And so oftentimes what tends to happen when you start teaching or working with your clients one-on-one -on -one is that they start to create this bonding hormone because you're helping them. As practitioners, you need to separate that. We are not here to bond. There's no need for us to bond. We are literally signposts that say, go that way, go that way. You don't bond to a signpost. No. So I'm very clear about that with boundaries. This is not what your focus should be. So when women and men are working with you, they will turn the relationship into a more caring relationship. They'll start giving you gifts, right? Which is fine in the beginning, but if you don't nip it in the bud, the gifts will start getting bigger with the expectation of something in return. That something in return could be your time, it could be free services. It could be friendship. It could be a lot of different things. But people give to get. That's an emotional attachment. Don't ever forget that. So also what will start to happen is that they will start caring for you. Did you eat? Are you hungry? Did you sleep? Oh, you should rest. And they start giving you direction about your care. No, 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 no. So in the last email that she sent me, she went very deep into what I need to do to care for myself. Ah, uh, stop. Let's hold on. I'm going to rewind you all the way back. I'm going to stop you and let you know. And I was very clear with this. This is a practitioner client relationship. I do not need you in the position of caring for anything that I do on a personal level or professional level. You checking in with me about my water intake, did I eat, and my resting is not needed, it's not necessary, and that's not your lane. I want to be very clear with this. All of your focus should be on you. All of your focus should be on you. I will keep all of your focus on you, not on me. I don't need care. My needs are met. That's not for you to do. You got to stay focused on you. When I tell you, she barked and bit so loud and viciously. And then she said, 
we can stop all services until we have a conversation. All of your money has been refunded. No more conversation needed. Have a lovely day. Because what you think is that this is negotiable. That's why you want to have a conversation. This is not negotiable. I don't need you in that position. That's not what this is for. And I'm very clear about boundaries. You have to be clear with boundaries. If not, clients will make you think that you owe them time. You owe them something or you owe them friendship. Here is the other thing that I know for sure. Because I know my chart, my human design, my galactic signature, my natal chart, my solar return chart, and all of those charts, you will either really, really love me or hate me. There's nothing in between. I already know that about me. I already know that either if you can't latch on to me the way that you want to latch on to me, I already know it's going to be a problem. Hence the reason why I only work one-on-one. -on -one. My classes are small because I know how penetrative I am. I hit people's emotional space. 50% of the population is emotional. So when you make somebody feel good about themselves, they want to be with you all the time. They want to make sure that you're well so that I can keep feeding them the feel good. That is not what this is about. I am not a pill for you to take. I am here to help you understand your assignment. Reshift, reshift. This is not something that I'm not on a retainer where you can just tap into and like rub lipstick on. That's not what I'm here for. I am here to provide resources for you to do the digging so that you can have that reverence for yourself, not reverence for a relationship with me. Most people want to be my best friend. I don't need any best friends. That's not why I'm in business. That's not what this is. That's not how I helped you. That's not how I met you. It was not under the guise of friendship. People will do it because they don't have any money. They don't. They need your services, but they can't pay you. But if they befriend you, you'll give them a discount or better yet, free. I've had so many people try that on me. It's been 18 years. I can give you a lot of stories. I've had so many people latch onto me and try to bite into me and just suck me dry. I am very clear about shaving that off and being okay. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal can exist. Herein lies the peace of God. That person can write a review. That person can tell people. They can stand out in front of your business with a picket. You are the truth. It's not going to stand. It will fall. You don't have to do anything. All I have to do is stay in my lane, stay focused, continue working on my North Node journey. When you know your North Node, situations like that won't get you off your A game. She won't pull me off and say, oh, I need to be more friendly. No, I do not. This is not a business to make friends. This is the business to help you understand where you're dropping anchor. Now, what those people are doing is changing the focus because they don't want to do the work. I'm very clear on what she was doing. Very clear. You're taking the information off of you and the focus off of you so that you can focus on me. We're not doing that. And my job as her guide is to focus back on her. So she's mad at me because I did my job that she paid me to do. She actually like felt that she could do that because she doesn't understand boundaries, right? That's oh, she showed up to my office numerous times, just unannounced. She, you know, demanded uh, a lot of things from me. Like, you have to go to lunch with me today. Um, first of all, I do not. Um, thank you, but no, thank you. Um, you have to try this ice cream. Is it? No, I do not. But thank you. Um, you know, you have to listen to all these podcasts. First of all, no, I do not. I, I limit know. what I expose my body to, what I hear visually, what I see. If I don't research it and go through it, I'm just not going to press play and listen to it. No. 
I do not. That's crazy that that was her language, though. Like, you have to. It wasn't even like, hey, do you want to? <laughs> People yeah. become very um, possessive. It's either they really like me and they're very possessive or they can't stand me and they want to, like, break me down and demolish me. It's either one of the two. I've been living this life for 46 years. It's very clear. I was feeling this before five years old. I just didn't know what it was. Now I know what it is and I know how to maneuver. Like you can't make me feel bad about having boundaries. That would never be. All of her boundaries are, um, well, she doesn't have healthy boundaries. Hence the reason why she's had some certain experiences. And that's okay. But here's the thing. I'm not here to be your best friend. You signed up for a program to help understand who you are at a soul level. Now, yes, I have gone out to brunch with her. Yes, I have gone out to lunch with her and other students. I've gone out with Jess. We've had lunch. It's not a problem. But just because I go out with one person doesn't mean that we're best friends now. It just means that we are mutually hungry and we need to take a break. That's what that means. So you will know the level of people's healing based off of how they respond to you. If they respond to you through emotion, they're still healing. If they can accept your boundaries, they pretty much have learned that lesson. She's still healing. She's still trying to understand boundaries. That's perfectly fine. If somebody tells, tells me, no, I don't need this, but they keep doing it. I think the next time that person tells you, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. I don't need you constantly bringing me things. Like I had to tell her, like, if you look around my home, I don't need any more nicky nacky things. I don't need any more incense holders. And she'll give me like, it's nice, but I don't need any more incense holders. I don't need any more shells to burn, you know, oils in love. And I tell her it's not necessary to bring me anything. When I want to do it, I want, I understand what you want to do. And so do Jesus. However, Jesus said, all we have to do is be. Now, if you want to get married, have a career, you can totally do that. It's not necessary. You do not need to bring me anything at all. There's nothing that I need. Hence the reason why I can give to you. That's the whole point. You see, and, and she just. Hmm. So you're going to have clients like that. They're going to make you feel like you are obligated. You are not. As long as you study yourself, you will know what you're obligated to do. God said you're just obligated to be. That's it. You are not obligated to jump through anyone hoops at all. All you have to do is be. If you choose to wear eyelashes, it's up to you. If you choose to put on a swimsuit, it's up to you. I like cowboy boots. I have two sets. I love them. I love cowboys too. But you know, that's a whole other story. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns. How are you feeling with this information? That's it. That's a lot as a client. I would have been, I think I'm, I'm learning how to set up boundaries for um, the opposite, for meanness or disrespect or whatever. So to have that, I think I'd be all, wrong? <laughs> so I think knowing that, you know, I mean, like Chelsea was saying, healing, not healed. Exactly. Like you said, it definitely shows where a person's at in their journey. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's definitely something I think that I will, mm. I'm glad you're telling us how to yeah. deal with all that because that would have caught me way off guard, I think, just, you know. Well, 
you have to remember again that most people move off of emotions. Mm -hmm. So the way that she has manipulated her way to where she is, is by showering people with compliments and you're so this and you're so that, and I'm going to give you a gift and I'm this and I'm that. And so for me to tell her, none of that is needed. I am full I to the room. I do not need your approval. I do not need your accreditation. I do not need your thank yous. I don't need any of that. She took it personal because she cannot manipulate me the way she's been manipulating other people. You rocked her. I, that's like, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I don't need any of that. I don't need anybody telling me that I'm special. I know that I am. I study this every day, love. Yeah. I, that. That focus is not needed from you. And when I tell you, she will send me emails with, oh, you know, I just think you're awesome and amazing, like pumping my, trying to pump my head up. But here's the thing, love. My heart is so full from acknowledging myself. Nothing can trump that. The biggest and highest vibration on the planet is being your authentic self. So for you to come in and think that your accolades about me will trump me being authentically loving to myself and then get mad because it does not, you have some healing to do. Yeah. It's the reason why I'm in the position I'm in and you're in the position you're in. You cannot give what you are not. It is impossible for me to give you stability if I'm not stable. Well, and she's clearly pouring from an empty cup. That's just why she's searching, you know? And so, like you said, you have to be aware, I think, of those people who are going to glom onto you because they think you are their healer and they have to do the work. And I think that that's been the beauty of this course and is the beauty of this course is that you learn both what you're supposed to be doing to heal them and also how to be how a to healer be. without losing yourself in the yeah, process go. of yes. somebody else. Yeah. It's, you're, you're getting into that sticky situation. It's not yes. an antibiotic, take for seven days and go home like it's supposed to be. It's it's so much deeper. And so that's, I, this. Yeah. it's so crazy cool. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And you can tell it's, people it's, that you're blue in the face. I mean, I think we've seen that. We've seen that with veterinary clients. We've seen that, you know, in oh. all types of different walks of life. I mean, in our forties, you know, we've seen enough of that to be like, you can tell somebody, you can stand back and say, this is, you know, the steps you should take to do that, but it's up to them, you know, and that's a hard thing, I think, to get emotionally invested if you don't put those boundaries in place. Mm -hmm. I think to, to step back and watch somebody yeah. and say, I know what they should be doing, or I feel like I know what they should be doing, but they're just choosing to do something completely different and to not lose yourself, especially if it's say a spouse or a parent yeah. or somebody that you really care about, you know, to stand back and say, I love you. People are very aware of what they are doing. People pay mortgages. They put gas in their car. They have insurance. You know what to do. You know how to manage it. You know what you need. You know why you're saying that. You know why 90% of the time, you know why you're doing A, B, and C. They're just hoping that you don't. I tell you that healing, not healed. I, I say it often and I say it in my house. If my husband or my son or somebody, you know, triggers me or, or there's something that I know, you know, I'll tell them, I'll be like, you guys, I'm, you know, you know, that's like a, a big thing for me and it has nothing to do with you. I just need to work through this. I'm going to go step out to the backyard or I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to just take a few minutes because mm -hmm. it's your responsibility. It, it's her responsibility. It's I'm a grown ass human yeah. being to know why that made me react the way I did and not take it yeah. out. Yeah. 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 To take ownership of how you are going to respond to stimulus is amazing. Number one. And then to choose to change your response, number two, is even more powerful. The other day, I was with my sister and my sister gets in these spaces and I, I just, I can't deal with her. However, I realized that that is a cop-out on my end. 
to a certain extent, and I'm still understanding this. And it happened again the other day when I was out with her. And instead of disconnecting, which I normally do because it really bothers me. And she's in my face and she's talking and, and, and she's all like animated. She's not mad at me, but when she gets like that, I, I cringe because to me, she's losing all her power. Like she's just giving it away and like, just I don't know what to do when that's, my sister is very smart. Like, why don't you tap into that? And it drives me bananas. And she's a colon therapist too. I've trained her. Yes. Yeah, we'll hold, we'll talk about that later. And so the other day when she got into that space, I just started breathing because that's all I could do. If not, I was going to wring her neck. I was going to choke her. So I just breathed and I breathed and I'm standing in front of her and I'm breathing. And I realized that my breathing calmed her down and she completely changed the subject. Oh, and she walked away from me and I'm still standing there like with a dog, like, huh? What, what just happened? Like my ears went down. My energy got grounded and then she anchored on and she came right back down. Where before, when she was like going like a kite, I was the wind under her kite. You see where I'm going with it? So sometimes you have to do some EFT tapping in front, like right then and there as the person is talking to you and you get back in your body. And then you go, okay. Because you're going to need to do that. You're going to have to anchor down when you work with your clients. You cannot be in the air. If you be in the air working with your clients, and we'll talk about grounding with your clients before you start. If you be in the air while you work on two clients, you're going to get sick. You're going to get sick and you're not going to really know what's happening. It's going to be digestive, respiratory, headache issue. You're going to be like, what is happening? Mm hmm. You didn't ground yourself at all, did you? So we'll talk about all of that. That class is fun. All right. So it is 11 11. I love it. Now it's just 11 12. Yay. 11 11. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns? This was a good class. And I see you all moving through the online portal. Continue to move through it. I see what you're doing. I love it. Um, I did send the email out. Was that Thursday you guys got an updated email for today? Yeah. Did I send it to you? My trees, did you get that email? So I know you had mentioned that you didn't get an email prior to that last one. Did Wednesday. you get this? Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, but you did get it, my trees? I do have one. I do have a question though. So it says to click on this and access the con the course because I'm trying to see about the online portal that you're talking about that opens up to the gpac.net. You've already been in the class, right, though, on the online portal, right? I've seen you in the online portal because we I walked you through it before. Yeah? Am I? Um, you would have to let me know, love. I would not be able to keep <laughs> up with that. That is your individual journey. Okay, so can I get go. the website so I can make sure? Okay, so here is what it is. I don't want you to make this more difficult than what it is. Okay. So basically what I've created for you is a way to study on your cell phone through an app called Wix, Spaces Through Wix. I That's all that. it is. Okay. You got that, right? I didn't know so what Wix was when it opened up. So I didn't log into that because I, I never heard of Wix. So I was scared to log into it because I was like, my email said something else. But okay, I got it. Now I know that it's from you. I can log into it. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So let me just check and make sure that you're actually in the class i can check that right now because i believe i have seen your name moving back and forth so let me just see really quick give me one second i'm gonna go to here we go i'm downloading the app now thank you 
Ah, so you are the only one that has not started. That's what I'm saying. Yes. So I have so a it question. Says for you. And then it opens up to something, say spaces. Is that correct? Yes, all okay. of that is correct. But I do have a question for you. Have you became become a member on GPAC's website? at gpac.net and if you have what email did you use actually i'm going to stop you i just found you and you let me know if this is correct i have my trees cole at yahoo.com that is my email but for some oh. reason remember that's the email that i can't receive anything from you okay so this is going to be different so what i'm going to do is this I'm going to add you to the program. You should have gotten a email or something saying that you have been added to the foundation level colon therapy program. So you might want to check that email and see because it's not coming directly from me. It's coming from Wix. So that's different. So you're going to check your, um, your spam. Yes, ma'am. So you're in. Came straight so to my what, email. Okay. Uh-huh. So what I'm going to do is stop the recording because now we're going into individual. So um, thank you. You guys stay right where you are. I just want to say thank you to those who are watching this recording. And this was a really good class. So you ladies stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.